if you suffer from pain when you're training and performing certain movements or after you perform those movements, or you just struggle to get into positions you want to get into when you're training, then watch this, because today I'm going to talk about the kinetic chain and the joint-by-joint -joint principle which was developed by Michael Boyle and Gray Cook. Now, the joint-by-joint -joint principle, we could talk about that each joint has either a function of mainly stability or mobility. So if we talk about the whole body, and we'll start at the bottom, the foot, we want that foot to be a stable joint. Working up to the ankle, we want it to be a mobile joint. Progressing up to the knee, we're going to go stable. Going up to the hips, pelvis, we're looking for mobility. The lumbar spine, the lower back, the core, we're looking for stability. And then we're going to go upper back and shoulders. We want mobility. And in the neck, we're looking for stability. Now with this principle, what we're going to talk about is the chain, the kinetic chain. And if there's a break in that chain, then that will cause problems above and below that area because parts of the body will have to compensate. So for example, if you lack stability in your feet, so the ability to preoccupy to keep that foot stable, then you're going to have to compensate and recruit stability from mobile joints like your ankle to be able to perform a movement. So if you lack foot stability, then your ankle won't be able to mobilize as much as you want it to because it will be working to stay stable. If we work up into the ankle, if we lack um, mobility in our ankle, then we're going to have to compensate for that lack of mobility up or down that chain. More often than not, it's going to come from, say for example, if you're squatting and you lack mobility in your ankle, you're going to have to recruit to get to the bottom of your squat you're going to have to recruit more movement in the joints further up that chain. And often that will be sort of overuse of the knee, overuse, possibly you losing uh, that core stability to get lower down, so you're going to round your back, you lose that stability there. And that works up as well if we go up into the, um, the hips as well. If we're tight in the hips, then that's when you see people getting that, that position where they're tucking their pelvis under, they're unable to to get the hip hinge they need to get into to get into a deep squat. So you're going to recruit mobility from areas where you should have stability. So that will happen as well if you lose uh, mobility in your ankle and you need to jump, run, stuff like that. You might overuse your knee or lose stability in your knee when you're landing um, because of the lack of mobility in your ankle. So normally your ankle would absorb some of that when you land. It would absorb some of that, um, that force when you land. If it can't, dorsiflex enough when you're landing, then your knee's going to have to overflex to absorb some of that landing and you take more load into there. So it works up and down the chain. And, and sometimes when you, when you find pain in a certain area, and the, probably the most common area people suffer from pain, I would say would be the lower back area. That, that area isn't necessarily the main problem. The problem lies up and down the chain. And I'm going to talk about the most common areas now because with this lower back, most often, more often than not, that lower back pain is caused by tightness in the hips, or, or and, I should say, and or tightness in the upper back as well. So these are the two areas we want to be mobile. We want the, the hips to be mobile, the pelvis to be mobile, and we want this upper back, this thoracic spine to be mobile, uh, and also alongside that, the shoulder joint to be mobile. So for something simple like, let's say we talk about the upper back being too stiff. That's going to affect you in multiple exercises, but something simple would be like a, uh, we talked about this before, an overhead press. If you are too tight in your upper back, in the overhead press, so you're in this position, and, and as I've said in, in, in previous videos, I would say the majority of the population are now over it at this thoracic spine. We know we spend a whole most of our lives, most of our daily lives in a, a what we call a kyphotic posture, in a posture where we're, we're working in front of us, where we're here holding our phones, um, on our laptops, driving a car. So it's very likely that if you spend many hours doing that, you're going to get tight through that upper back and through that shoulder joint as well. So when we do an overhead press, we're going to struggle to be able to press overhead without recruiting mobility 
from where we shouldn't be recruiting it, but from where we should be maintaining stability. So we want to see in a good uh, overhead press. Ping this nice strong position, the connection between the rib cage and the pelvis. And as we press up, that stays nice and stable. But here, then what's going to happen is as we press up, I'm going to have to flex too tight to keep that press vertical. So I'm unlikely to press it that way because it's going to be inefficient. So what's going to happen is I'm going to lean back, overextend through my lower back, and press up this way, compressing these discs in the lower back. So there's a, a simple example of where you're lacking mobility in, in a joint that should be mobile, and therefore you're going to recruit, recruit mobility in a stable, from a stable joint pattern, um, and that's going to cause you a higher risk of injury. And that will be the same if your hips are tight and you're coming down into a squat. So if your hips are tight and you're unable to get your knees working outwards in your squat, you're unable to, to hinge properly through here, then you're going to tuck your pelvis under. You may lose this knee position as you're going down. Um, so you're going to lose the stability in the joints you need to be stable, and that's going to put you under a lot of um, pressure, a lot of risk of injury from those movements. And that's kind of where I see, so we, with the functional movement screen, which again comes from um, Gray Cook, one of the things that, that we like to do with that functional movement screen is to have a look at people's movement. And from there we can, I don't have to say predict injury, but we can definitely see where there's a higher risk of someone getting injured and the movements that would, um, that would cause that higher risk of injury as well. And we can then screen and, and look at ways we can improve either the mobility or the stability of certain joints to, to lower that risk of injury and, and also improve performance. And I think that's what most people want to see when they're training. They want to see themselves not, they don't want to see themselves getting injured and they want to see their performance improving. So really, really important that when you get pain somewhere, so if it's a shoulder injury, if it's a lower back injury, uh, if it's a knee injury, which are the kind of the three, I suppose, the three uh, most common injuries we're going to see, that you don't just fix the problem, you don't just fix the fact that you've got pain, but you also look at what's caused that pain. So why has why that pain happened? Because if it's happened once, unless it's some kind of trauma, in other words, someone's, you know, you're playing football and someone slide tackles you straight through your knee, um, that's maybe, maybe not because of how your, um, your structure is, but just a, a, an accident. But otherwise, if, if, it, if you do have an, an injury that's caused by just doing something simple like squatting or deadlifting or jumping or running or something like that, and if you just wait for the pain to alleviate and maybe just to fix the pain and don't look at the underlying issue, you're going to be at a high risk of that happening again. So it's really important that you find uh, a coach or trainer that understands these patterns and can actually look at how you move and diagnose um, the problem and find a solution for you to get you moving better, to get you moving more efficiently. And that's going to help you perform better and, and performing better. If you're interested in aesthetics, then performing better, uh, moving better, is going to help you look better because in terms of building tone, building shape, the human body looks much better when it's in correct posture, when it's moving well, and when you're training through full range of motion. Because when you train through a full range of motion, you're training uh, the most amount of muscle fibers as well. So you're going to get the best muscle tone throughout your body. You're also going to move through full range of motion. You're going to get more calories because you're using, again, more muscle fibers. So really, really important that your movement quality is really good and you've got someone to assess the screen where um, the issues are that you need to deal with because um, one of the problems with just stretching or just rolling out and you roll out everything is it's not very time efficient. And I'm all about the minimum effective dose. I'm all about finding the thing that is most time efficient for myself uh, and for you guys because none of us have an unlimited uh, diary of time. So it's really important to find out, okay, what's the priority? What do we need to fix right now that's going to help us improve our movement? Yes, we may have a list of um, problems with our body this long, and that's kind of where I started um, when I started training. That's kind of what I looked at. I looked at I'm so, there were so many issues that I just didn't want to deal with anything because it was just too much to handle. I, you know, I started to try and do it, and was, you know, working on working on working on movements, but it just took so long, and it was depressing, and you didn't really see any improvement. So... All I do now is, is pick out there may be one or two key areas for someone to work on 
and get them to focus and nail down those areas. Once those areas are brought up, then we can look at other areas to work on from there. But really, really important to, to get a good screening in place. Um, I often don't do screenings specifically like an FMS screen, like a functional movement screen, where I get someone in and actually go through every single position. What I'll do most of the time, because unless it's, it's someone who is trying to specifically get better for a sport and they want to actually take that time and work specifically on certain areas. For a normal athlete who I'm training, like a personal training client or um, CrossFit a client here, what I'll do is when they're doing those movement patterns, so when they're in the gym and they're training and they're doing maybe just a body weight squat, I can have a look and see how they're moving there. And from there, we can diagnose. We can say, okay, look at your squat pattern. We can try and correct the squat pattern. If that's not happening, then we'll look at, okay, what joint is, is maybe causing the main, the main issue there. That's how I like to work. Um, other people might have different ideas on that, but I think that's the sort of most efficient way for, for a normal person rather than getting every single person in for a screening and identifying every fault within their body. I think it's a bit much for everyone to be able to deal with. But really important that you know with your own body where your limitations are, what the most effective thing you can do right now to improve your movement is, and also be careful of in terms of your body for that risk of injury as well. So look at that stability, mobility chain. So again, we talk about stable foot, mobile ankle, stable knee, mobile pelvis, core stability, okay, lower back, um, anterior core, and then mobility through that upper back and shoulders, and then stability in that neck joint. And that's what we're, we're really looking for in that. I'm gonna post some more videos on, on those areas and, and, and things you can do to test that. But I hope you found it interesting, hope you found it useful, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook.